Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome. I know y'all are like, Amy, you look a little different. You're a split screen. There's two of you today. <laughs> I've got something special that I really want to share with you. Mm -hmm. One, you've heard me talking about the last maker class that we had, and it was amazing. I'm telling you, I, I loved the craft, but I loved that evening. It was so special. Mm -hmm. And all the ladies that were a part of it talked about how special it was for them as well, because mm -hmm. it involves three of my favorite things. Our maker classes are these virtual workshops. You're doing a craft. Look at this. I've got this huge box next to me, and this is our March 11th workshop. It's a virtual workshop that you're going to be doing with your tribe. It's like, Amy, what's a tribe? A tribe is a group of people that love what you love. They love crafting. They love intentional conversation. They love to be able to learn something. They want to better themselves. They want to grow personally. Mm -hmm. And so this time, I'm just going to tell you this. I created this for myself selfishly because I have a journal. Jean just handed me a new one. Um, and the journals are great. This is my prayer journal. This is what I'll write in when people are, I'm going to be praying for. But the prayer board is something that you're able to put in your kitchen. And so I have invited a very special friend here today with me that we are going to be talking about a, a topic that is near and dear to her heart. Mm. Guys, this is my dear friend, Karen Conley. Karen, welcome. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Amy. It's great to be here. Thank you. I'm going to tell you guys, when I talk about what I love, this is the crafting portion, of course, because I wanted a prayer board in my kitchen. I wanted something that I could walk past and I could see somebody's name that I was praying for that wasn't, that wasn't in my journal, that it was something that it was there. I wanted my children to see it. I wanted my friends to see it. I want anybody that comes in my house. I want them to see I am a woman of prayer. I am praying for friends. And guess what else? I love that we've got praises. I am praising the fact that I'm going to get an answer to prayer. I know the Lord is faithful and I know how he answers prayers. And having this visual reminder in my home that's beautiful, that I crafted, that I made, that is made out of beautiful wood. Um, we have the stencil, we have the paints, the stains, uh, the chalk art. Everything comes in this gorgeous box that you're able to do this virtual workshop. And the three things that it involves, Karen and I were talking about this, but it involves crafting. It involves a beautiful study or conversation or an interview. This time we're fortunate enough to have my friend Karen Conley, um, who has written an amazing study called Miss Perfect. Miss Perfect. <laughs> and then deep, meaningful discussion. We break out after you've done your craft, after Karen has spoken, and then we're going to break out into groups of 12, and then you're going to connect with all these women. So that's the basis of our... Um, maker class that's virtual that everybody can be a part of. Now, I want Karen to talk. Now, I'm just going to tell you, last time we talked about friendship. And I'm so grateful, one, because Karen's a very busy person. She travels the country and speaks. She is a brilliant woman. Now, not only is she brilliant, she's pretty. She's married to uh, Chris Conley, but she is so well thought. I mean, when I think mm -hmm. about how how well she writes and how well she speaks and then how it resonates with the heart of women and what they are mm -hmm. struggling with. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that we really struggle with is Miss being perfect. So Karen, where did you come up with the idea of Miss Perfect and what has resonated with you as far mm -hmm. as how when other women talk about having to be Miss Perfect? Well, honestly, I probably spent the first 20 years of my adult life and I didn't I didn't have this terminology, but it is it was what I was doing. I kept striving and thinking that if I could juggle all the balls in the air, all the responsibilities I had, if I could just have a day that it all went right that that was my goal. And I just kept working for that. And I was just always disappointed. And so finally, as I sat down and I was literally, I wrote this women's Bible study because I was like, I want women to have freedom. I want women to live intentionally, not just doing everything that they feel like the world tells them to do. And this whole idea of Miss Perfect, it's really a play on words because we try to be Miss Perfect 
perfect. We try to get it all right, but we miss perfect. We never are going to hit it. It's just not reality in this fallen world. And so for me, what I've realized is this idea of Miss Perfect, she's a mirage. She doesn't exist. I love that. I've got to remember that. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a mirage, guys. It's a lie, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's a mirage. It is. Yeah. yeah. So that's my heart was really from my own freedom saying, I want to help other women to learn and not make the mistakes that I made, have the freedom in their life and to do things with purpose. Right now, we don't have any margin in our lives to do the things that God created us to do because we're spending so much time doing the things that we feel pressure to do. And so really that study is taking eight different weeks and each week it's a different aspect of our lives. And my desire and prayer is to help women look at the different areas of their life and say, okay, what am I doing from either internal pressure or external pressure? Some of the pressure is real and legitimate. Some of it is just perceived you know, we think we're going to disappoint somebody. We don't even know who that somebody is if we don't show up at something. And so um, how do we look at those areas of our life and say, OK, this is something that I don't need to do. And let me make space in my life to do the things that I'm passionate about and the things that God's wired me to do. So that's the premise. If, if you if you're not comfortable answering this question and I'll, I'll be happy to share. But when you think what is Miss Perfect to you in your own life? Like, what is the mirage that you have in your own life about being Miss Perfect? Oh, gosh. Well, um, initially, I thought that my life would be perfect. Um, I told my husband on our first date that I didn't think I'd ever get married. I wasn't having children. Um, no man was going to get in my way. And I wanted to be a CEO. And I thought what I've learned about myself is I do have passion and drive and, 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 and things that I feel called to do, but I was looking at that title. I wanted, I, I wanted to feel good about myself from having the title of CEO. That was me proving that I was good enough. But then I was very fortunate and, um, God did a lot of work in my heart and I was gratefully married, have two beautiful kids. But then in the next stage of my life, I really had to battle because I was so afraid of messing up my kids and that I wasn't going to be a good mom, that there was this idea of what is it like to be a perfect mom? And I'm not there and I need to keep striving. So I didn't even enjoy some of the early days of my parenting because I've just felt all this pressure inside. And so I, I, whether you're young or old or business or home or wherever you are, we all feel pressure from somewhere, but it's so often we are missing out on the true joys in our life because we're focused on the pressure instead of the gifts in front of us. And part of why I love being able to talk about this is because I love personally having deep, meaningful conversation mm -hmm. about topics that people don't want to talk about. Yeah. They, yeah. they almost seem taboo in the fact, mm -hmm. because it's like, what do we say? When we see somebody, we're like, how are you? Oh, I'm, I'm great. Yeah. yeah. Great. How are mm -hmm. you? It's mm -hmm. like, and it's like, oh, you know, Johnny is at Vanderbilt and Amanda's getting ready to graduate with honors from, you know, from St. George's <laughs> or, right. and, the, and, and, and I'm sitting here going, I am a total failure as a right. parent. Mm -hmm. And I have this idea in my mind of if I could lose this weight, that my life would be perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. so we all have different areas. We all have different, I guess what you're saying, mirages yep. that we think what would make our life perfect. And mm -hmm. so um, being able to really talk about this and you give us some very, poignant, powerful mm -hmm. um, pointers mm -hmm. and share with, share with us um, on March 11th, as far as what you've learned, you're yeah. going back and really kind of giving us an outline with some bullet points and things that we can grow personally from. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a constant journey as far as really living free 
and being able to celebrate where we're at and celebrate mm -hmm. today. And so um, I just want to invite those of you that are watching this. This mm -hmm. is, it's all backwards. It's hard for me. This is the project. So this maker class is going to be three different things. We're going to make this craft. We're going to ship this kit to you and you will have this enormous box mm -hmm. in your home. And I'm going to start it out with a craft where I'm teaching you how to do this. And we're going to work on it together. And then Karen is going to take us through this study and talk about what Miss Perfect looks like. Give us some really great nuggets of knowledge, of information on this. And then we're going to break out into groups of 12 virtually in the Zoom. And while everybody is working on their craft, then we're going to go into deep conversation about what Karen has taught us on um, on this whole idea of ha feeling like we have to be Miss Perfect. Guys, it's going to be a beautiful night. I promise you're going to be blessed. You're going to make beautiful new friends that love doing the same thing. That's why it's your tribe. And again, it's March 11th. You can go on A Maker Studio, purchase this kit, and it will ship out to you and you'll have it in plenty of time. So Karen, I cannot tell you, I am so looking forward to this. Mm -hmm. I am, um, I'm excited to finally be digging into your amazing study of Miss Perfect mm -hmm. and letting mm -hmm. these ladies have some freedom of, mm -hmm. um, of really, as you said, you know, before we went live, as far as letting us really celebrate who God created us to be mm -hmm. and, um, and start living in that. I love yeah. that. Well, we only get one life. So now is the time to let go of that pressure. And I can't wait to be with you and can't wait to see the crafts. And I love the tribe, like having just conversation out loud with other women about these things that are so real to us. Even that begins the freedom process. So I can't wait to be with you. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, guys. See you March 11th. Bye bye.